Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the final section of the tournament. It is now an elimination bracket. A double elimination bracket, it turns out, is going to be a bit of an interesting situation where we have Dime Friend and Google Frog, who are going to be fighting, as well as Hokumoko and Anir, who are also going to be fighting in the lower bracket. And then whoever wins the lower bracket match fights the loser of this in loser's finals. And then whoever wins that fights the winner of this. So, standard double elimination with four players. So we're going to be on Wanderlust. It's the first map for today. And Dime Friend Google Frog, who we didn't get a chance to see much of before. So here we go. Get to see that. Pokemon Gunnaneer is going on in parallel. So we're not going to be able to see that, or at least not going to be able to see the whole thing. But it's honestly, it, it is going to run a little long. So I figure just easier for everyone if we just watch the one match. Anyway, Google Frog for Shields, Dime Friend for Cloaky. Classic matchup, Shield versus Cloaky as both of them going for the center as well. Bear in mind that in this map, you can go basically wherever you want along the north to south axis. Well, yeah, north to south. But most players will start in the center because it is the most even. I mean, you can easily get the north, you easily get the south. And you can also easily go from there to defend the choke points. Just generally be in a defensive position. Time for we'll be able to get some contact on Google Frog first. But at the same time, Google Frog is playing shield, so the, the Glaive will probably not deal that much damage, all things considered. So though Dime Friend, using that hill to their advantage, Google Frog is aware of that Glaive. They certainly know it exists. Oh no, wait, do they? They do now. They didn't at first. And Dime Friend able to get a free Metal Extractor. Oh, not quite free. There it is. At cost, Metal Extractor. Losing a Glaive at the cost of the Metal Extractor. But stay. They got rid of the Metal Extractor. I actually got rid of the Metal Extractor fairly early. I'm not sure that made profit. So, that's something. Managed to get a little bit of an advantage on Google Frog that way. While Dying Friend, on the other hand, got the run Metal Extractor set up, and Google Frog has not decided to go over that hill to take it as well. So at this point, Dying Friend in a slightly better position economically. Very slightly. But at the same time, it could come down to this one battle here, where this battle, I mean, between the Glaives and the Bandits, the Glaives could win, and now that Dying Friend has gotten their Glaives in position, they could easily take this. But Dime Friend clearly wanted to be a bit more careful. They want to go around, they want to make sure that they're not taking any fights they don't have to. If they can find anything to get going there, that'll work. That'll work really well. Because if they can find anything easy to harass, they can just take it. If they find any middle extractors, they can take it. If they find a few straggler gla or stri straggler bandits, yeah, they can take them. But glaives don't be bandits in a straight-up fight. But none of these are straight-up fights! These glaives are actually doing a good job just being... Well, being grouped, coming in together, make sure to support each other. Losing one glaive in the process of fighting the bandit, however, but only the one in the process of fighting two bandits, that is good value. Especially given that the metal is inside of Google Frog's base. Sorry, Dime Friend's base. So Google Frog lost a little bit out of that exchange. Might, in fact, lose a bit more. Their commander is going to be fine. They won't lose to these glaives. And I think the glaives are actually going to... This is a suicide mission on the glaives part. Dime Friend realizing this, pulling back. Smart move because those glaives would have died. It's not an engineer commander. It is a battle commander. Or strike commander, rather. It is well-equipped to deal with glaives. It has more than enough HP to survive them. At least that many glaives. It would take probably about eight glaives to cleanly get rid of that commander. Not to mention, there's a lotus there. That lotus alone makes things tricky. Now that the commander's upgraded, it's even harder. Especially with the lightning rifle, which I totally agree with. Good choice. At this point, though, Dying Throwing just trying to find some way to use these five glaives. And honestly, the best use I'm finding, I'm seeing for them right now is just as a distraction. Something that gives Google Frog a thing to worry about, but isn't Dying Throwing's main focus. So Dying Throwing can build up. Google Frog's more worried about defending their base than they are about dealing with Dying Throwing's expansions. And occasionally they get things like this, where a glaive comes around the side and just stops an expansion completely. Possibly killing a convict, and even if it doesn't, at least slowing down Google Frog's expansion efforts. Still, though, Dime Throwing is only a few metal ahead, and Google Frog has managed to get 200 metal attrition advantage. So, it's still going to be a bit tricky. Actually, having lost that Glaive army, or very nearly lost the Glaive army, enough that it's effectively irrelevant, Google Frog has far more room to maneuver. They know there's very little that Dime going to have that's going to deal with them, as Dime Throwing is, as would be expected, focusing mostly on economy. There's only a handful of Glaives left. There's five of them, one of which in production. There's only four on the field. And that is not enough to deal with these bandits. I mean, six bandits for four glaives? 
four, four bandits for four glaives is going to be a problem for the bandits. Dying Front has no way of defending. I'm actually a little surprised they haven't gone for Reavers sooner, and they are indeed going for Reavers. Going for Ronin and Reavers. Ronin is a little surprising. I guess they might expect they're going to see Thug Law Ball or something. Or Outlaws. I mean, that is a fair expectation. They are, in fact, going to see that. But at the same time, Reavers would get rid of the bandits more effectively. Because there are a lot of them, and the Glaives aren't going to do much good. They're just going to die. Although Glaives with defenses supporting them. Maybe. You could see that, potentially. But at the same time, it is really a question of where Dimefront is planning to position these things. Because if the, if the rogues are, are they're running in position properly, they could still basically damage the bandits without getting much in return because of the defenses. And that seems to be the plan indeed, as Google Frog doesn't want to move in. I mean, this entire area essentially is denied. The south side is Dimefront's. Got full control over that. While the north side, a bit more softly controlled by Google Frog. Dimefront could still theoretically get in. The bandits are the main problem, as Dimefront doesn't have the forces to deal with them directly. And to be fair, Google Frog could easily move in, and indeed they are. This north side is dead. Un unless Dimefront moves in rapidly, and they are trying to do so, this north side is going to take a lot of damage. Even with the rapid redeployment, the north side is still going to lose most of the metal extractors, losing the Lotus. The commander might be able to help, but all the metal extractors go down. The commander is going to have to rebuild. That's just the reality of the situation. Same time, though... One Glaive managing to get some damage in, but only enough to slightly weaken the control that Google Frog has over the north side. Not enough to destroy everything. And over to the south, Google Frog going for the main attack. I mean, the north side was just being held. Dimethrin is the one that has control of the south side. Google Frog wants that. Wants to break that as best as possible, and doesn't quite manage to do so. Hmm. Oh yeah, also... Went out of the pick from before, but... That's not only really relevant right now, because relevant right now is what's over on the southern side of the map. Because that is man, Google Frog's main assault. Their commander's there and everything. But of course the problem is, what is going to happen now that the north side is being assaulted by Dying Friend? This one Reaver's going to have no problem. Or, ooh, no, 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 it might have some problems. It's getting close to the range of this Lotus. But it's not enough. Yeah, that Reaver's going to have a field day now. And of course, Reavers do regenerate HP. A few more seconds left, and it will get its HP basically right back up. It can go straight back to raiding through, straight back to tearing apart the rest of the factories. As long as Dimethrin does not lose this fight too quickly, this Reaver could possibly peel off a bunch of Google Frog's forces and force Google Frog into a much more uncomfortable position. Like, right now, this Reaver is essentially just... It's not doing much yet, but it could be used to draw attention. Google Frog, however, at this point, does not care. They clearly don't consider the Reaver to be that big of a threat, and honestly, I'm not entirely surprised that they aren't, but at the same time, just lost their worker up there. However, now with the Reaver dead, there is no reason for Google Frog to fear the north side. Although, another Reaver could come up, but even then, the bigger problem now is the south side got kind of lost in the process. Like, they're pushed back. Google Frog doesn't have as much to deal with this stuff, and Dimefruit has a massive economic advantage. Like, Google Frog has only really managed to get 20 metal per second in terms of actual extractors. Now, if you look at the map, Google Frog hasn't gotten much of the center. Dying Front is solidly taking this part of the center. And now that Google Frog's lost the, con the conflict that was over to the north, they have no way of expanding to the north having having destroyed the Reaver. So ultimately, Dying Front still managed to gain a pretty large economic advantage just by getting rid of that one constructor, which is why I always point that stuff out. And, or as much as I can, I point this stuff out. And it is meaning Google Frog cannot reinforce anywhere near as quickly as they would, I'm sure, like to. Nice slow bomb, though. That could open things up. That could still open things up, but it's going to be tricky. Nah, never mind. There's the Blastwing to try to just close this out. Google Frog losing their army thanks to the Blastwing fire. And Google Frog, like I said, does not have quite as strong of an economy. They still have a reasonably strong economy, but relatively speaking, maintaining that economic strength and maintaining enough of the advantage in terms of their commander, given that their commander is a lot of their economy, that is going to be a challenge. Especially considering that now the north side is being assaulted again. Though Dying Friend, I'm not sure why they're doing this. It gets rid of the flank. Good plan. Not sure why more than two Reavers are going north, though. That force would be partially better served down here. Now, granted, the rogue is in the way. I get that. But at the same time, having this force, the Zeus and, Zeus and Reaver force, at least split between the two. Like, the Zeus and Reaver down, a couple Reavers up. I could see that working. 
On the other hand, this will work. This will break Google Frog's north side. It will definitely do so. The problem is more if Dimefront loses the south side in the process, it's a bit of a pyrrhic victory. And it looks like that is indeed what's going to happen. Though, to be fair, a lot of damage is being dealt over here. Again, though, the slow bomb. Google Frog with those slow bombs. I mean, or Disruptor Bomb, rather. Specifically, Disruptor Bomb. That is doing an amazing job keeping control over their opponent's army. But even then, Dimefront still has that economic advantage. They still have enough forces to deal with this stuff. They're still able to wipe out most of Google Frog's north side. And at this point, Google Frog has very little to deal with this at all. The only thing they have is what Sagero is suggesting, which is... Oh, no, not rogues. They're not suggesting what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of snitches. What Google Frog could use, potentially, is snitches. Although, at the same time, Dimefront, I think, would have even better value off of imps. Like, if they got an imp up here, stunned the commander out, and then pushed in, they'd be fine. Now, it looks like instead, no, it's a combination of specters and... and nimbuses. Which is an interesting choice, forcing Google Frog into the anti-air game, which... They're forced into it very hard. At this point, Dimefront's only built that one Nimbus. They have hardly anything. Mostly they're just going for artillery now with jump bots, and mostly, mostly going for Cloakbots factory. And the Cloakbots, they'll have no problem dealing with the Vandals. So at this point, Google Frog, they've pushed a lot of money into something that isn't that relevant. Dimefront's su successively baited them. And at the same time, we have we have a Reaver just having a field day over to the Northwest. And the Zeus doing a great... Not the Zeus. The Knight doing a great job handling anything trying to come at them. So, really, Dimefront has this map in the bag. Or this match in the bag. And it is one... It is best of one. I mean, that was just a lot of clever play from Dimefront dealing with the bandits as carefully as possible. And holding that south side quite effectively. It also, was really good... Like, that... That positioning here, the picket, helped quite a bit against that bandit shot. And also, a lot of it, I guess, was the fact that Google Frog did rush in with the bandits and did lose them. Leaving a lot of opening for Dimefriend to come in, and at that point, Dimefriend, like I said, they had the center. Or they had the south center. They had that taken. And while Google Frog was taking the north center and, you know, expanding there a bit, a lot of that was pressured against. Dimefriend managed to get that pressure to work, managed to make sure that Google Frog couldn't hold that as well as they'd like, and then by the time Google Frog started to even approach it, that's when the Reavers came up, that's when they were able to get rid of the convict, and then it was even harder for Google Frog to maintain the center. And now, of course, the force of the Reavers and Warriors, or the Reavers and Knights. I mean, I didn't agree with it when it came out, but it worked. I was more concerned that the south side would be lost, but the south side was defended sufficiently well. Dimefriend lost that slowly enough that the north side could be taken. And now the south side's getting taken back, and Google Frog has no anti-air support because, again, successful bait on Dimefriend's part. Very well done. And now if Google Frog loses the commander, I think they're going to throw in the tail. But they don't. They don't lose the commander at all. And the commander has quite a lot of regeneration as well, so they should be fine. Is it auto repair? It looks like it is... Oh, the armor plates, yeah. So yeah, they're still in a good position, but at the same time, Reaver coming in again. It's gonna be tricky, but they've managed to nullify the range advantage of the rogues. Smartly done. I like it. At least I liked it, and now they've kind of moved away from that, but hey very least, able to get the damage in, and with the right positioning, if they manage to survive the rogues long enough, maybe they can get in? No, nope, thanks to the Lotus, they can't. Maybe be able to get the factory. Completely cut off Google Frog's reinforcements. At this point, though, Google Frog just doesn't have the production capacity, and realizing it, throwing in the towel, that is the first, that is the upper bracket finals for this tournament, for the December tournament. We're gonna be moving on, I think, to... I'm not sure the lower bracket finals, but... I mean, moving on to something.